Hi, everyone, and welcome to Spooky Season 2024 here on Pop Counter Culture, where we are celebrating the new horror auteurs and the new horror classics. And today, we're talking about Robert Eggers' 2015 movie, The Witch. Now, this is a beautiful looking movie, especially the new, like, second sight release. I just barely got it, so it's new for me. There's a, a studio 4K release, um, which is fine, but it's just a little bit too dark. The second sight version uh, definitely brings out more of the texture, more of the color, and paints a way more terrifying picture in the process. It has that sort of like dark, dreadful horror film look and all that, but it also has this real lived in quality to it. You know, not just the cinematography, but the production design and especially the dialogue. It really helps to sell the verisimilitude and immerse you in this folktale 1600s New England style, you know? You know, and I feel like every single uh, character is really well cast in this movie, down from like the goat <laughs> who plays Black Phillip, who was probably one of the greatest animal performers of all time just for that role uh to the little annoying kid the middle brother anya taylor joy is great as well the lady from game of thrones she's really good in this too but what i think is really underrated in this movie is uh, ralph innocent the green knight himself as the father here right because there is definitely like a paranormal evil entity going on in this movie i think the real threat the really immediate threat of this family is the father's pride trying to distract from his own failures and placing the blame of, on others instead of like taking responsibility uh, for himself more than some witch out in the woods. You know, this is very much a film about fundamentalism. I mean, like right at the very beginning, the very opening of this movie is pilgrims escaping religious persecution, telling the, the, the main family at the center of this story here, like, hey, you're too much. You need to chill out. And if you got pilgrims telling you you're taking it a little bit too far, you're taking it way too far. This is a, a film about like a very Christian family was putting all their faith in like a, a God. And like there is a higher power in this movie, but it's evil and all that. And, and I just see that's like a really ironic fuck you to this family that like there is a God, but he's not paying attention. He's not even looking your way. And that's one of the more interesting things about rewatching this movie is like trying to figure out when and where the evil was invited into this family you know and uh you know i definitely have my opinions of it but i like to hear your opinions so uh, let me know down in the comments when the evil was led into this family and i think when this movie really starts to kick it into like the next gear is when the parents start talking about selling the daughter off to sort of feed the rest of the family and you know that's just because anya taylor joy's character goes from seeing herself as a kid you know a, a beloved member of this family to now she's just property. And that's like the horror at the root of this movie, right? Is that this is a movie about there being this great evil thing hovering over this family that they can't understand. And the religion doesn't protect them and they can't protect each other because this evil brings out all the worst in every person in this family. And of course, we know more about what's going on than what the family knows. So like seeing them fall victim to everything is why this movie works so well. Ultimately, what I think this movie is about is how fundamentalism and patriarchy really hold people down, especially women. Because of that, like the final moments of this movie are really like elating and joyful and really satisfying in a lot of ways. But I think that's Robert Eggers' little trap. As happy and as elated as Anya Taylor-Joy's character is at the end of this movie, she is a servant of the devil. So like if she's happy that she's a servant of the devil, and we're happy for her that she's a servant of the devil, then by the transient properties of being in the audience, we are now servants of the devil. And that's pretty badass and nice. And really, I love this movie because it's just so evil, right? It's an evil movie that holds up these quote-unquote good Christian people and asks us, what's so good about them anyways? And that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. And say hi in the comments below. I've been Ed. You've been awesome. Until next time, peace.